Good afternoon. I'm Ariana Cohen Halberstam. I am the artistic director of Boston Jewish Film. It's so great to be with you here today for our 32nd annual festival and for a conversation about Honey Mood. I want to thank our partners on today's event, the Consulate General of Israel to New England and Boston Women's Film Festival. And it is really my pleasure to get to speak to Talia Lavi, who I believe was in Boston uh, a few in 2014 for the Boston Jewish yep. Film Festival. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we showed Zero Motivation, which won the Ophir Award, the Israeli Academy Award. So welcome back, virtually. Hi, nice to be here. Well, I, I wish I could be there, you know, for real. So do we. So this film is, is so much fun and also, I think, darkly fun. Um, and I wanted to start by asking you, both this and Zero Motivation are dark comedies. Um, do you see a connection between the two films? Um, well, I guess that there's something similar and um, maybe in the tone uh, of the two films, but not something that, you know, um, planned to be similar in both of them. Um, maybe in the dialogue or also in the cinematography, but, you know, both films tell a story uh, through focusing on what is uh, usually considered uh, in the, the margin or background. Is that how you say that? Um, you know, I like it when, when these things uh, are put in the center. Uh, zero, zero Motivation was like a war film uh, with no real weapons, and Honeymoon is a, is a wedding film that starts, you know, after the wedding. Yeah. I almost wondered, though, if, like, Daffy, I think, was the name of the lead in... in Zero motivation could grow up to be loony, you know, 10 Probably. years. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what, you know, I, when I first heard of zero motivation, an Israeli told me about it and said, I don't know if it'll translate to American audiences. And it did. It was mm -hmm. an international success. Um, mm -hmm. When writing Honeymoon, were you considering an Israeli audience or an international audience? What is it like to write comedy? for a, an, out, an outside audience? Mm -hmm. Well, I actually, I actually always, um, you know, think of, um, of Israeli audience because, uh, you know, um, I'm very much rooted in, in Israeli culture and language. And um, I don't think of like international um, success or target audiences. Um, so, um, but, but I think that, that, that you never know uh, what can be, I, I mean, the, the, the honeymoon touches uh, universal themes such as, you know, love and commitment, but, but like I said, it's also very, very Israeli. So, so I'm, I'm very happy if my film um, go international, but it's not like the, uh, you know, um, something that I think about, it's not something that I focus while, while doing them. The, the tropes and the language of Honeymoon, though, is based very much in familiar rom-com or even classic American movies. You reference mm -hmm. Once Upon a Time in the West and Gone with the Wind, and you say there's a line in it where Noam says, um, you know, I, I, in the movies, I would come save you. So what were your um, references that you were drawing on and your inspirations for this? cinematically well well first the you know the nice thing about references like this is that you know the, the viewers discover them on their own like you did and i think it's um you know i may miss the point if you know i talk about them but yes but of course the film is is inspired by um you know uh many other films and, and especially by classic hollywood romantic comedies before before anything, um, and um, you know, also in the way we it, we we uh, how do you say um, cinema the way it is shot uh, and the soft uh, colors, the the blurry look of the inside, the the interiors of the film is very you know like um, like all these uh, like these classic Hollywood romantic comedies. 
and uh, and of course, and the part you know from being a, a romantic comedy, it's also a one night in film. Um, and what I like about this genre is you know the possibilities it opens for storytelling and um, and also you know the visual challenges that you have to do with filming mainly at night. Right. That's interesting. What was that like? Filming well, at night in Jerusalem? It wasn't easy, and I was also I was also eight months pregnant at the time. So oh, wow. it was cold, nice in Jerusalem, and um, and um, Avigail, the bride, has to wear this short um, short sleeve um, dress all the time, and she was really freezing. But but I hope <laughs> you can see that in the film. Um, no. Yeah, <laughs> the good thing <laughs> being pregnant is that you're always warm. So uh, it was a challenge. It was a challenge. I think that everybody who was there still remembers it. And, um, you know, having lunch at um, 1 a.m. And, um, but it was fun. Jerusalem is, is, I mean, I think we see Jerusalem at night. I certainly watching the film was remembering, you know, not this year, but I usually travel to the Jerusalem Film Festival each year. And will end up walking home, you know, late after a screening and it, it brought back a lot of those memories and the film really takes you from Baca to the film school and across, you know, to the Moshev and we're going all through the city. Can you talk about why you chose to film in Jerusalem and, and how the city itself sort of becomes a character in the film? Well, uh, first, the film is, uh, is based on a short story that I wrote while living in Jerusalem as a student. So I'm, it's not like I, I, I did not choose to, to have to do it in Jerusalem. It was written there from the beginning. That's, that's where I've always imagined it taking place. And, you know, for me, Jerusalem was, was like, was home. So I didn't see it as a exotic uh, location. Uh, also, Although Jerusalem can be really, you know, mysterious and magical, and also, of course, very complex, and uh, and and, uh, and it means that you know it has a lot of it has a wide uh, variety of of different kind of locations to offer, um, and what I like about Jerusalem cityscape uh, is that that you may find glamour, you know, in the most everyday and seemingly ordinary spots. Absolutely. I mean, even when he's, when it's people just cleaning the streets, um, and then of course, outside of the prime minister's house, uh, where there's, mm -hmm. speaking of glamour, a dance scene. Can you talk about how that came to be and what it was like to shoot that? Oh, um, well, this scene was, um, was, you know, that was, uh, the, the biggest uh, scene of the film to make. And it's, it, you know, it's, it's funny that the, the location that we shot it in became one of the most, um, uh, one, the location that you see the most in, new, in Israeli news right now, because the, all the demonstrations that are taking place there right now, I could not imagine it, of course, back when we shot it. Um, and, um, we shot uh, the scene during um, um, two half of nights because we needed the hours when there is no traffic. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, we, we rehearsed a lot on the scene and we had, uh, I worked with a great, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, choreography? Choreography uh, by Choreogra Renana Raz. Choreographer. Yeah, yeah. Choreography by uh, Renana Raz, who is a, uh, a dancer and actress, um, and the the guys who played the guards were really amazing, and um, and it was um was a scene that I really enjoyed uh, making, and it was like a fantasy of mine that I got to um to you know how do you say that to create uh, to fulfill. yeah fulfill yeah fulfill yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's the moment where we really shift to fantasies, and later we see this white funny rabbit on the street, and um, and there's all these yeah. fant rather fantastical elements in the film. Um, yeah, and I want to talk a little bit about the characters in the film, and there's actually a question here um, from the audience about the that says, 
his very nosy and possessive parents would be familiar in an American situation comedy about a Jewish family. Are many Israeli parents like that too? And many of the characters, you know, from the sort of pushover, um, from Noam, who's a bit of a pushover, to Looney, who's um, a bit, you know, self-involved, maybe. Um, the, the characters sort of play these stereotypes. Can you talk about creating the characters? Well, uh, the characters, um, first, um, the characters are, um, when I first wrote the short story a long time ago, I felt that I was more um, um, identify with the character of the bride. And then when years went by, I felt more, when I, when I rewrote the script again, I, I, I wrote it more from the point of view of the groom. So it was very, I mean, I, I, I'm very connected to both of them, but it was interesting shifts for me to make uh, while writing their characters. And, um, and the parents are, uh, yes, they're very typical Israeli parents. And, and I'm sure that also um, American Jewish parents are, are like this as well. So um, yeah, this is uh, funny scenes. And, and, and of course uh, we had those great actors, great well-known Israeli actors to play them. And it was really a pleasure to work with them. They were fabulous. Um, the parents were the great Hamek relief. And then uh, Yara and Ranana, I believe are played by the same actress, is that? By the same actress, yeah. Yeah, it's, I think one of the things, you know, I know you say Jerusalem is, is just home for you, but I think one of the things that you do really beautifully in the film is show not just the different neighborhoods, but the different characters that you might meet on the street from the guy sweeping outside of the falafel shop to, um, to the people in the elevator at the hotel in the very, in the second scene. Um, can you talk about creating those sort of side characters that make up the make up the scenery of the of the film? Sure. I, first, I, I can tell you that that uh, it's all very authentic because I really lived a long time in Jerusalem, so it's not like um, I'm not looking at it from outside, but but really from the inside. And and also, I, I didn't want any location to be like you know the, like a tourist and location of Jerusalem, but, but the place where this kind of people, this kind of, you know, community of, of um, second in Jerusalem and what their life is really like. Um, and also because, you know, I don't like it when I watch a film about a place that I know, a city that I know, and it doesn't make a geographical sense. Um, so it was very important for me to be um, true. Um, how do you say um, not to um, to be geographically authentic, so that you can really draw the roots that the characters are doing, and and it makes sense. Maybe one day, you know, when the when we can go back to our previous life and fly and travel, uh, you could come to Jerusalem, and I'll take you to a honeymoon tour, and we'll walk through the locations that that the characters were in. That's a, I love the idea, especially if I can stay in that honeymoon suite. <laughs> oh yeah, this one. yeah, That's gorgeous. Uh, there's a number of questions coming in about your short story. So th the first one is, what is the name of the short story, and that you wrote, uh, and is it available to read? Unfortunately, no. I did. Ne I never. Um, I never published it, and I never. And obviously, did not translate it to English. Uh, maybe I will. Um, I wrote it a long time ago. Just I, I write many things, and I, I um, you know, pulled it out at a certain point, and decided to to make uh, to to try to make a script out of it. That's why it's mainly uh, it's it's maybe this is why the, the reason that it's so full of uh, dialogue. The film, you know, it's very they're very talkative. Um, the characters. Which is also, you know, very familiar if we're talking about, you know, other romantic, classic romantic comedies, like any of Nora Ephron comedies, they all are very talky right. as well. So yeah. it fits really nicely with that genre. Uh, obviously, I'm imagining the initial, the initial short story had a Hebrew title and not Honeymoon. Is that? Sure, yeah, yeah. 
What was the what was the Hebrew title? Oh, I'm too embarrassed to tell you. <laughs> okay. Well, if you publish it, maybe we'll find out. Yeah. Uh, there was also a comment that went along with that question that says, thank you for making this film. It was very entertaining with so many complex twists and turns in the lives of your characters. It really made me laugh. So thank you. I'm so that. happy to hear that. Thanks. The other question was about, about the short story was about how many script revisions you went through and what sort of changes you made. So were there, were there changes that shocked you in turning this from a short story into a script? Yeah, that's a great question. I did do a lot of changes. Um, um, and you know, and the, the, the main change is, uh, is not to write, you know, that, that's what you do when you write a script. I'm not, I cannot write what the characters feel or think, but only what they do or say. Uh, so that's the main shift that you have to do um, when, when you uh, turn, when you try to turn a story into a script. Uh, so and that um, that um, how do you say um, um, makes you uh, make many changes too in the in the script, and I wrote it and then I um, um, I put it on the side like I I made zero motivation I made other things and then I I um, I read it again and I decided to continue working on it and then I really rewrote many things there. And I try to um, uh, to improve the dialogue and and the story and to um, I, so I did so many rewrites on the script I cannot even remember how many. Um, there's another question coming in here about um, your process. Oh, your process in creating a story with fantastical elements. Did you always know you were going to have the dance scene? Uh, did you always were those part of sort of the original story or did those come in when you sort of saw it coming to life on the screen? Well, that that specific scene was always there. It was my uh, my passion scene. <laughs> you may you may call it this way. Um, I always I really imagined this scene uh, and I really wanted to um, to see this uh, situation of uh, of one bride and facing so many options that the like the, the all those those guys are the feeling sometimes the false feeling that you can have about the i mean when you get married you 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 choose one person and and you give up the, uh, many other options of of different lives that you could have so they represent all this variety of options that she may feel she missed the the there are questions coming in about speaking of people that um, you loves that you may have missed, and the question that just came in was about why Noam broke up with with uh, Ranana, or was it? Uh, yeah. Why did they break up? Um, well, he felt that he's not really alive when he was with her, even though. They were a match, and um, and they were like maybe a good couple, but he felt like he's um, I don't know um, like like he's so um, not a, you know not really alive, and um, you you can have this feeling in a, in a relationship even if it's if if even if there's no specific problem even if everything is supposedly good. But, he was deeply bored. That's why she tells him um, that you will get bored with her too. And um, he feels that maybe the one good thing about Eleanor is that he will never get be bored with her. Right. Hopefully, more than the the only good thing. But but I think that that's what I think is interesting is that. In the film, you sort of see the things that people that they're all afraid of get giving giving up, but ultimately we made they made this decision. And I think the line in the towards the end of the film where they say we're together forever for now or something like that is yeah is is a, an interesting one. Um, can you where do you want that to leave us? Or is that it? Just where it left you, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I, th I think the idea, I mean, I think it's, it's, a, it's an important message um, about what it means to, to make a decision and to commit to love. Um, there's a question about casting. It says the chemistry with the talent was wonderful. How did you cast the film? Well, I, uh, I cast the film together with casting director Orita uh, Zulai, who's a great casting director here in Israel. And um, we auditioned many, many actors and actresses, and we met so many great and, and wonderful, uh, talented actors. And eventually we chose this couple because they had such an amazing chemistry between them that, that, um, that contained everything that, that I was looking for. Yeah, they were fabulous. Uh, there's a question about um, the Israeli film industry and what changes you've seen over the few years. Was it easier or more difficult to finance and produce this film than Zero Motivation? Or was it having done Zero Motivation, was this easier for you? I guess it was easier in a, in a way for me specifically, um, but not for... Um, um, but I did, it wasn't easy for me to get, um, to have a bigger budget for this film because, um, because of, um, um, how do you say that? Um, it's, it's very hard to get the films here um, funded and we do a lot of here in the Israeli industry. Um, we are very dependent on um, co-productions. Co and this film is actually, um, one of the first co-productions co with uh, Italy. Mm -hmm. um, we have a great uh, Ita Italian co-producer, uh, Marika Stuc Stucci, um, who, is, um, who, who became uh, a co-producer of the film. And we, um, we were lucky enough to do all the post-production, the color correction and the mix in Rome. Um, you know, last, only it was less than a year ago. Who would believe that, huh? Wow, well, yeah. Time is so strange right now anyway. So strange, um, yeah. So there are a few questions coming in about the nurse um, and about the character of the nurse. Um, one of the questions is about how she, the, the connection with the young boy, you know, with the liver and, and how much of that was supposed to be a figment of his imagination and how much of, of her existence was, was real. Well, I always, because I'm a person who, for me, ever since I was a kid, I had a hard time telling between reality and imagination. So I still keep this um, um, quality character I don't know how to say that so yeah. um, um, and about the deliver yeah I had a lot of uh, thoughts about it if to make it clear that but yes I wanted to you know the viewer to think that it's the same boy that they were talking about with the cab driver but then eventually you you get to know you get to realize that she's not practicing now as a nurse so um so hopefully, you know, the boy is, is good. There was a question here about what happened to the boy. I think people were worried about him. So I'm glad to hear that, that, that yeah. he might be okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, yeah they, they love the, all those, the moment where he says, you can bless, you can bless me because you're a groom and sort of people, I think, I, I like the way the people they interact with sort of bestow power to them in a way that they don't realize they have um, for that night. Um, I want to talk about the music a little bit because the music from yeah. the from the very beginning there's the there's the we, we the credits are over Jewish wedding music and then um, yeah. we go into very charming music and you play Madeline Peru and Starry Starry Night and and then there's also yeah. these great sound effects like when the uh, baby's crying and you, I think it's an elephant sound or something. Wow, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it is, yeah, I'm that? so happy you, you noticed all that, yeah. <laughs> can you talk about the choices for the, the sound and, and the music in the film? Sure, that was one of my, uh, what was uh, the thing I maybe puts the most effort in the film because maybe 
because music was was uh, was very important and for me in this film and I wanted the soundtrack to be like a score and and um, one one uh, piece that you know goes on through the entire film and um, with some um, mot motives that uh, you know reappear and develop um, as the story develops and uh, and I worked very closely with uh, with composer Asher Goldschmidt and I think he did amazing job and also the yeah. sound designer is uh, Ronen Nagel who also did amazing job at the, and that was I'm so happy that you uh, noticed all those little details I mean it, it it's it really I think drives the film and I, and um, and even the fact when he comes back to the room and is they're playing the same romantic song with the nurse I think that it really carries the film in a very beautiful way so I think you did a lovely lovely job with that thank you uh, so what is next for the film? Well, the film was not um, released yet in Israel. We are still um, hopefully not naive, but we're full of hope that cinemas come back to our lives and we really want to release it on the big screen. So, um, so we're still waiting for, um, for this part of our life to come back and um, so, so right, out, right now it is not released yet. In Israel, it was supposed to be released on June. And then, mm -hmm. you know, what happened? And um, so you, you, you're welcome to cross fingers with us. That's <laughs> with all of we us. We will. You know. Yeah. And this is one of the first, I mean, this, this film was supposed to premiere at Tribeca Film Festival back in April, which was one of the earlier festivals to go virtual. Um, yeah, we so did not go cool. virtual with it uh, because we, we, at that point, we thought it was really the beginning of it. So we thought we were really naive back then and thought it was just, um, I think, you know, Tribeca told us we were really looking forward to go there. And then we realized that they had to cancel the festival. And when they decided to go online, they, um, you know, they offered the films to go online and uh, only a few did that, we were still waiting to um, not to go online back then. Um, and um, so uh, what can I say about this crazy world? I, I, I love the Rebecca Film Festival and it was such a great experience for me on um, 2014 to be there. So I really hope to physically <laughs> go there again. Well, hopefully by the by the next one. Are you working on another film now? Well, right now I'm working on a TV series that I'm in the shooting of it uh, these days, um, and um, and the next thing maybe maybe another film, yeah. Or maybe we can bring. We do show TV shows here too, so maybe is it a comedy as yeah. well? <laughs> yeah. Great. Well, uh, there's one more question that I will ask you just because I think it's an interesting one um, about where you initially got the idea for the short story that you wrote. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the what was the motivation to write or your inspiration for the short story that then went on to to become this film? Well, I guess it was uh, you know my my thoughts and fears um, from uh, from this kind of commitment and from this. Um, you know, it was back in this time of my life that I was very occupied with this issue. And um, so it was kind of writing my, um, yeah, my, my fears from this kind of commitment and from, you, you always, uh, when you grow up, you always uh, get the, uh, um, when you watch films and read the fairy tales, you get the message that the ultimate happy ending for every story is a wedding. And, and that's the thing to, to wish for in every situation. That's like the solution for all pains and all problems. And when you get, when you, you start to be close to this event, you, you start fearing what, what would be next. And because, you know, the, your problems won't go anyway once you get married. Um, and that's what that that was, you know, the the, the initial um, 
inspiration for the film, this thought of what happens right after the ultimate happy ending. That's how I started the story. And it's a rare moment to see because, we, you know, this past year films like Marriage Story came out and there are plenty of films that deal with marriage is deeper into it, but but the night of is, is, a, is a very clever um, approach uh, to, to what, what, what's in people's minds. And, and I, we do see through your characters these fears of, of what it means to commit. You do a beautiful job at that. Thank you so much. And I'll read you one more comment just because it's, it's complimentary. The scene under the, when the ring fell under the couch and then the opening of the gifts was brilliant. Um, so and then, the, then the scene with the eye robot was hysterical. The question is how you thought about that, but if you have time to answer that, I, I would love for you to think of the eye robot. Um, oh, the eye robot. Yeah. Oh, I just thought it was like a funny, like a very, um, uh, like a common gift uh, for for. <laughs> <laughs> I like those eye robots. <laughs> And, and, it, and, it, and it continues through the film when they stop at the garbage truck in the middle of the street. So it's a great. Yeah. Well, I, I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight you for, for you, me. today for us. Um, and thank you for sharing your film with the festival. Um, and I hope it's been, a lot of people have seen it through our festival and I know more and more will watch it over the next two days. So thank you again. And I really thank hope we can bring you, bring you to Boston with your next one. So. Okay. Okay. Lila, okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. bye.